Pasquale Sr. will instruct in his popular style of Yoshitsune Waza. Shihan Di Pasquale brings to us 49 years of experience in the martial arts and is known as the father of American Jiu-Jitsu. Shihan Di Pasquale is a security specialist and has been a personal advisor and bodyguard to many notable celebrities and political personalities. Shihan Di Pasquale has lectured on everything from hostage negotiation to bomb threats and safety in the workplace. Shihan Di Pasquale places safety in the dojo among the highest consideration when training and emphasizes reality when dealing with a conflict situation. What I'm going to try and show you today is a few techniques using no power. We do not use power in jiu-jitsu. Power is only used in the hands and it goes when it's put into the proper position. We have a series of motions that we use so that you can determine whether or not your hand is in the proper position. One of the motions we use is hi. You see a friend, you say hi. Man throws a punch, you say hi. Next move we have is called Hail Caesar. Hi, Hail Caesar. Next position, position that we have is go to hell. Man throws a punch, you step in, you say go to hell, catch the arm, you break his elbow. The reason why we say go to hell is you don't say go to hell this way, you say go to hell this way and it lifts the elbow. If you want to say have a drink, you can do the same thing. But when you say go to hell, people seem to realize that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, can I use my friend over here? Blocking technique will be soft. As he throws a punch in, all we do is we deflect it a little bit, very, very easily. There we just said, hi. Now we say, hail Caesar. Now we say, go to hell. Now if we want to take and we make this simple little street technique work even better, we lock him in. If you have the hand, that's also very, very good. You don't need much strength when the man is down. Transfer his, his thoughts to someplace else. We'll go through it one more time, high. See, he wants to pull his hand back, so I always say, fine, come in this way. From here, if you're going to put a haka hadaka jime or a naked choke, step to the side. One, two, three, and the man will immediately go to sleep. You want to put a little more power onto him, push his head forward. Now, the reason for go to hell. When you say go to hell, you're lining up the radial bone and the ulna bone of the arm. And you're saying go to hell. This gives you greater strength. Stands to reason. If you wanted to cross from one building to another and you had two two by fours, one two by four, two two by fours, right? Each two by four would hold, say, 100 pounds. If you were to be able to tightrope walk and you put one on top of the other, you could walk 500 pounds on top of two two by fours, one supporting the other. Radial bone supports the ulnar, ulnar supports the radial. Now I'm going to show you a little technique that is very, very useful, and I used it a lot as a policeman. Man comes in with the punch, step in, lock with a strike to the side of the neck. This hand says, Hail Caesar. And from this position, rake it across his neck. Grab his hand, lock in. Once you pass 55, 60, you stop getting down on your knees. A word of advice. I don't have to tell this to policemen or to bouncers or to people who've been in fights. I know it's people like Sensei Vasquez, God bless him. They know what I'm talking about. If you're fighting three or four people, do not do a sacrifice on a first or second for the, for, uh, person. Do your sacrifice throw on the last person there, otherwise you'll be going home with your teeth all knocked out. One more time. Block, that's high. Hail Caesar. You follow so far? Now we went the other way. You see, once you put the, the, naked, the naked choke onto the person, once you put that naked choke on, 
you have him in a very, very distinct disadvantage. And by raking the hand across his throat, you're going to put him out. If this hand is locked in this position as you come back, grab the hand, put a gawk on, hail Caesar again, if you wish, and in. Now if you're a policeman, you take, you put a cuff on one hand, put the other cuff on his belt. Now you have a one-handed fighter to worry about. Let's do the same thing, except you're going to have a little bit of a variation with it. When your man comes in, so the camera can see it, you make your high block. OK? Step and say, Hail Caesar this way. Turn your man completely around to a position like so, grabbing his hand. Now, if you want to hurt, hit him right here. You can apply. You can apply little shinke waza on either side. You can strike here. You can take him down to where it's going to really hurt him onto the mat. Let's do it from the other side. You got the high block, right? Hail Caesar. Now when you went by, you hit him with your elbow. It's an empiuchi. Say, look at all these beautiful people. And you go down and around. Lock the hand behind him. Go slow on these, it's very painful to Uki. And then, of course, you can apply your, 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 your shinke waza, various and sundry parts of the arm. You can strike here if you wish. Or if you wish, as I said, you can kick at the, knee, the, the back of the leg and you can drop him. If you want, you can drop him down so that the body is here, like so. Push his head forward. Okay, would you? I'm going to come up with another one over here you might like. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to make a very, very easy type of striking technique. You're going to approach your man from the front. When you're making your choke, remember to go to hell. It's to the side. Step in and then lift it up. Just like you're on a, at a bar and say, all this money is mine. You don't go this way, you say, it's mine. So as you make your, your choke, you come right in. Follow? Now, it's very simple. This technique is very, very good if you're pulling a man out of an automobile. If you're a cop and you have to pull him out and you don't want to kill a man, you don't want to club him to death, but do it as humanely as possible. Work your way into a position that I'm going to show you from Tachi Waza from a standing position. Somebody? As he comes in with the punch, you make your block. OK? You're going to step in behind him. Like so. You're going to put a little bit of a jam on him, grab his material, if he's got a jacket or what have you. Then push in and pull. <laughs> he's behi he, I'm behind him. He's in front of me. Now, I can't do very much. If I put this under his chin, he'll feel more. But lock in and then step back. <clears throat> now, you say, how does that come out of a car? If the man's in a car, he's got his hands on the driving wheel, like so. Reach forward and pull him out from the side. Now, when you pull him out from the side, your elbow is going to be in the way. That's not a disadvantage. It's a definite advantage because you're going to go right into his chin. Use all the points on your body. As you get older, get softer because it will not work if you do it stiff. You want to try it? Yes. One of my favorites of all favorites is a very simple technique, and it's all, the only thing it is is high, Hail Caesar. You say, Hail Caesar, and say, look at all these beautiful people. And it goes something like this. As he comes in, Hail Caesar. Look at all these beautiful people. Now, you'll notice the body position that he's in. I step back and lock tiger claw. Now right where the clavicle hooks up with the, with the top of the shoulder, there's a point. I'm using my thumb. Use your, fourth, your middle finger, your hippon can. If you want to be nasty, slap into it. And this is, of course, his tiger claw. If he was the last man in, step in, step forward. Sumagayeshi with the left would be Hidari Sumagayeshi, right? Throw him back over, and you'll be on the mat like so, holding on to him, his neck stretched out about that far. 
D-E-A-D, -E dead. Don't use tiger claw except in dire emergency or unless you're fighting a tiger. You want to do that again, Chris? Steps in very easily. Hail Caesar. Look at all these beautiful people. Okay? Put in position. Right? Recognize go to hell? You're going to say, but he can strike you in the groin. Well, no, he's not going to strike anybody in the groin. Try it. Easy on the neck, please. No, this is a, a little private joke between the two of us. When a man comes in with a punch to the stomach, and you make the block, his natural impulse is to pull back. So as he does, you go with him and then whip it. Now, <laughs> I'll let him tell you what happened once in the dojo. Like somebody had a marble down in my bottom, it went right to the top of the head and I passed out about 15 years ago from the shock, this boing like pinball machine. So when you're making the block, and you get the, 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 the hand, he pulls back, lift it up, so that the hand goes up this way. Don't just get it this way, so that you can all see. Get it so the hand comes up this way, not straight, because when it comes down, whip it down like so. A whipping technique is extremely powerful in all systems. It works equally well even from the kotemawashi, where you step in like so. If you whip, you'll do a tremendous amount of brachial damage, elbow, wrist, fingers, shoulder, neck. So the whipping technique is what we want. Once again, from the punch, pushes in, he pulls back, whip it. He knows what to expect, so he's going with me very, very quickly. Now, when you do it, watch out for your partner. If you may have a man who who's, has a hand up here and he's strong, strike him on the elbow then push in and come back down again, okay? Thank you very, very much.